sent an email out to everybody saying, are you going to be able to make it um, the weekend before so that we could um, start it and not have to start over inauguration weekend. So everybody responded yes, and then things changed for certain folks. So there was one, one person that was not going to be able to be here, and we knew that we were going to try and record the session for her, but then there's been, since then, two or three other folks have had work-related issues that came up, which meant that they weren't able to, to be here this morning. So the reason why Adele and Karen have been in the back of the room extensively to, um, to, to set up the camera and stuff is to really record today's session so the folks that are not able to be here this weekend are going to be able to participate um, by watching the recording later on of, of, the next, of today's class. All right, and then do we have Katie on? Yes, Katie's here. Hi, Katie, can you hear me? <laughs> so, Katie also has had a work um, uh, interference, so she's not able to be here, and so, but she is going to be able to be here for the next two, um, for the, uh, for the next two hours. So, thank you for standing by while we're waiting through this process, uh, but typically we're not going to be using WebEx as a live feed just for the first two hours of class. All right, so having said all that, um, welcome everybody to the brand new cohort, the Sustainable Landscape Group. I think we actually have one, two, three, four, possibly five folks that are not able to be here right now. We expect one to come in and um, and later on this morning, but there are two that are out of the country and two that are involved with other work-related issues. So. Um, my name is Lord Wheeler. Most of you have met me. I have been serving as the program director. Hi, welcome. Come on in. Okay, we just started. So, um, so our sustainable landscapes program has been running about since 2007-2008, and it has been a huge success in the sense that people are there's no other place we can actually go to get this this type of information. So it's really informing our landscape design and our planning communities in a way uh, that um, allows folks to really see the landscape as a place of creating um, su a sustainable future for ourselves in the professions that we do. So as many of you know, we have three channels of folks that come into the Sustainable Landscapes program. We have a group of folks that will be self-identified shortly that came through our landscape design program and if they have already had the training through DW, we have a handful of folks that are coming in as urban planners. They come into the DW Stable Urban Planning Program. And um, they are, you know, we really um, have been thrilled whenever the planners have joined our program because they expand our conversation much into a much larger scale. Um, and then we have a third channel, which is allied professions. Allied professions can be anybody that works in a relationship as it relates to the land outside the building, and um, and it's been really again they've been really active and dynamic members to have it as part of the sustainable landscapes community because they add a whole new per perspective to that. So when you get to the introduction, I assume that they'll also be able to talk about what path, how they got to the sustainable landscapes program through what path. Um, Adele Ashkar, if you haven't already, don't already know her, or met her, has been the program director for the program for both the Landscape Design State and the Landscape Program for something over 20 plus years. Around, around that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, she's now the Associate Dean of uh, Academics for the College of Professional Studies, and she's going to be actively involved in um, the day-to-day -day runnings of um, the Landscape Design and State and Landscape Program. Most of you have already met CJ, who has introduced herself to almost everybody here. Um, I like to tell the story that CJ and I met way back when we were babies in this industry. <laughs> I was a landscape foreman for a company called Camel and Farr in Annandale, and I was installing trees out in Fairfax County in a development. There was one shade tree and one small flowering tree on each landscape house that was in the new development of like 50 or 60 houses, um, and I would be responsible for running my crew, putting in 20 trees a day, that was 10 houses, and then the foundation landscapes. And 
CJ was the foreman, I'm sorry, the um, inspector. inspector for the arborist, the Fairfax County arborist. And so she was, um, so the first, and back in those days, if there was another woman out anywhere within 17 miles of doing the work, you were like, oh my God, there's another woman in the vicinity. So, um, so I first met her in that capacity where she was inspecting the work that we were installing. And then a couple years later when I was sitting for um, my arborist exam, she was a proctor for the arborist exam. And, um, and then she predates me as a member of GW's uh, faculty. So she's been a part of GW's faculty for how long? Uh, 15 years. 15 years. So really, a, you know, has long, she's taught plant classes. I'll let you give her, her I'll let her give you a bio, but the bottom line is, is that um, she's um, very, 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 very well loved and respected in one of our most, um, uh, fa favorite instructors in our program. So it's always exciting to start off the entire span of landscape program with CJ because I hope you all have the same experience that many, many other students have had prior to you. Um, I'm going to come back and talk a little bit more about the program after you guys do some introductions and CJ kicks off the course. But I just want to say thank you very much for coming and uh, participating in this. Um, this is uh, if you have any ongoing issues or anything that you want to, to, to discuss or talk to, either reach out to myself or Adele as you're going through the program. And Karen, I didn't introduce Karen. So Karen Thompson has become our technical whiz kid, but she comes to us fr prior um, as a graduate of the landscape design program, and she also is working for one of my most favorite lands sustainable landscape design firms, um, Lush Life Landscape. Mm -hmm. and, um, so she has on the ground experience of this type of work as well. Um, but she's here mostly in her technical capacity and we brought her in last semester or the semester before? Uh, last semester to help Susan with intro to the uh, Intro to design specific. So she's a TA but focused largely on technical issues. So without anything else, I've turned this over to you, CJ, and um, enjoy the ride because it's one you'll not have the opportunity to have in other parts of your life. Really, this is doing this sort of level of education is one of the most thrilling things that you can do. So really, just be prepared. It's 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 hard work. There's nothing. There's no question about it. But it's one of the best opportunities you'll ever have in your life. At least that's my my experience of it when I went through it, and um, uh, it's been our students' experience as well. Great. Thank you for that very nice uh, introduction, Lauren. I appreciate it very much. Uh, to summarize my resume, I spent 14 years working in Fairfax County, Virginia. I had seven different jobs in three different agencies. If you looked at my resume, you'd think I couldn't keep a job. But uh, smart on my resume, I grouped them together so it doesn't look like I changed jobs so much. Uh, but by the time I was the county arborist in Fairfax, I had seen all different sides of the development process. Uh, as, as I worked in the Park Authority for a while and I was a development applica applicant for a permit with parks. So I got the opportunity to see the development pro process, I call it from planning to permits. So the hard part about doing anything related to land and the ground is that many of us know one part of that process and we don't understand the whole spectrum. So part of what I want to talk about today is those kind of spectrum things, and if you can't see my little nesting dolls that I have up here, this is the symbol that I use because you look at the site scale is tiny. What most of us deal with is the site scale, right? You're doing a design for a landscape or something individual. But then you get up to larger and larger scales till you're dealing with a state policy or you know a countywide policy on things so it's good to, to look at things through that lens uh, so after working in fairfax county for 14 years i uh, had already moved to maryland and lived in prince george's county for 20 plus years before i moved recently but there i worked for the maryland national capital park and planning commission which you always have to take a breath before you say that 
MNCPPC, but as those of you that uh, live and work around this area, you know it's Montgomery and Prince George's counties work together doing parks and planning uh, for those two counties. Uh, it was my extreme pleasure to, uh, towards the end of my career, to get to write the first ever, I guess, uh, resource conservation plan for a county that includes green infrastructure, agriculture and food security plan, uh, so a green infrastructure plan, an agriculture and food security plan, and a rural character conservation plan all together. They all needed updates, they all needed to be moved forward together, so we put this project together. I'm very proud of how thin this document is because we honed it down to just the policies we wanted and everything's based on science. This is about five years of interns work doing intern level science that supported the policy that we did. So. That I'm very proud of to have just finished that. So I retired at the end of July. Uh, about a year ago, uh, my spouse and I moved up to Western Massachusetts. So we get to live on 12 acres in a beautiful house. And that's uh, kind of the uh, princess story ending for, uh, for that part. But I love doing this work. I love teaching this class. It's gonna be so much fun. We're gonna do some active things. Uh, I will lecture some, but I want it to be interactive and I expect a high level of participation from the class. So uh, I will engage you to, uh, to participate. So that's a good uh, introduction. I would also like to say that um, in keeping with university policy, this is a safe space and everyone's opinion is valuable and we wanna make sure that everyone gets to be heard. So um, I just wanna put that out there. In these times, I will do my best not to talk about politics. Uh, it's very hard, given uh, where we are today and given our subject matter. So uh, I will do my best, and I would ask you to respect that as much as we can as well. So I appreciate that. So let's go to introductions. Um, let's see. I'm not responsive here. OK, I didn't try that ahead of time. Uh, any suggestions? I'm not able to advance. Katie, you still with us? Katie, you still with us? Yes, I'm still here. Okay, I'm gonna do shout outs to you just so we know you're, uh, you're still there. Excellent, okay, yeah, they're adjusting the lights here a little bit to help out. That's good? Yeah. Uh, I'd rather that last one be back on, please, for me. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. all right. So here's my contact information. I do check my GW email as you should also because I will send the emails there. But if it's something urgent that you need me to look at right away, feel free to use my uh, personal email. Um, there's also my cell number if you need to get a hold of me. Class, you know, you're running late, whatever, please let me know. And uh, as you know, we're going 9 to 5 for four days. And lunch is on your own every day and we'll have breaks in between, okay? And I believe both, uh, and tomorrow will we have breakfast items? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So, That's, nice to Thank know. you, that's really nice. Okay, well, we got you for eight hours. We gotta, you know, pump you off to begin the day. Okay, so let's do introductions. Uh, please be sure to speak up so that Katie can hear you and so that we can get it recorded. Uh, your name, what you do during the day, how you got to the program, and we'll try to keep these fairly succinct. And uh, then one sustainable practice that you do every day, or weekly, or whatever, in your life. And whoever gets to start gets to say something easy like recycling or something. Uh, so, uh, 
Who wants to start? I'll start anyway. Ah, here we go. Our volunteer. Hi everyone, my name is Malaya Kulakosh, so Malaya like the Himalayas. Um, I am currently working at the District Department of Energy and Environment. I'm a Green Fellow over there. Um, I'm working on the Green Building Policy and we're working on updating that. So that's kind of my main task while I'm over there. Um, my background is in environmental and ecological engineering. I graduated from Purdue University in May, like this past May, so, um, and just started the master's here in sustainable urban planning. Um, and the one thing that I do every day is I use my recyclable, or my reusable bottle. Yay. Go Purdue. What, what was your degree in? Environmental and ecological engineering. Uh, ooh. Good. So you got some science basis, a little yeah. engineering. I like it. Great. Welcome. Okay, we'll just we'll just kind of go zigzag. Michelle Kay, why don't you take the mic? I'm uh, Michelle Kayon, and I'm an architect. I work for the government within the legislative branch. We're the architect of the Capitol, where I'm in charge of a variety of projects. Um, I work. I was in charge of the Capitol Dome restoration. And now working in the town and house office building. I'm a lead AP. Um, I've always enjoyed when I have the opportunity my jobs to get involved in the landscape. I really enjoy that. I was in charge of design and construction at the National Zoo. Mm -hmm. I really miss being involved in that landscape. And we do have, I work closely with Capitol Grounds. Um, and about three years ago, my husband and I bought a little cabin down in Madison County on four acres. And it stands there with me spending all week thinking about what I can do for the landscape, <laughs> not having done anything. So, <laughs> so that's what I daydream about. And, and how, did you get to the, how did you get to the program? Oh, and I got to the program, I, I heard about it quite a few years ago through, um, oh God, do you know Holly Shimuzu? Yeah. Mm -hmm. she's, she's in charge of, uh, she was in charge of the Botanic Garden. And she, I, really? she just mentioned to me in passing, and for the first time in my life, I had an opportunity to be free on weekends, so I thought, yeah, time to do it. Well, I really like this because we've already got two crossover professions, engineering and architecture, that can help to expand the discussion. That's that's great. Let me swing around to this side of the room. Go ahead, Lisa. So I'm Lisa Tornicky. Um, Christoph is my maiden name, and that's what appears on the list because TW can't remember I got married back. 30 years ago. <laughs> um, so I'm an analyst with the government right now. That's my day job. Uh, I've been working for the government for 34 years. And uh, I'm a student in the GW program. This is my what, fourth year, maybe? I forget. I took a year off, so it's been a little on the slow track. Um, but I am really excited to finally get to this point and looking forward to everything. Um, so one sustainable practice. Oh, oh I, I forgot to go ahead. <laughs> oh, sorry. Go okay, so so actually, you know, I I had this in the car and I thought I'd bring it. Um, I take these from work every day <laughs> because they're recyclable, but everyone throws them away. So I just I harvest them and I use them at home for planting purposes. So that's Great. one thing since these don't recycle. So that's a reduce. Yes. That's a reduced that's waste. A, and what, how about you? Um, I take all my clothing hangers back to the dry cleaner. I guess that's recycling. I'll oh. think of something better okay. by the time we come back around. Well, you know. Depending on what they do with them. I always wonder. <laughs> I know. I know. Okay. I'll think let's, of let's keep better. moving on to <laughs> Michelle here. I'm uh, the other Michelle, Michelle M. But how ironic, I spent 21 years of my life on Capitol Hill. Oh. Um, so, oh, But fun. I didn't work in your area. I was work um, on the House Appropriations Committee spending all your taxpayer dollars, and you did a really good job at it. I didn't waste a penny. <laughs> so um, I came through to the program, <clears> through the landscape design program, and like Lisa, this is my fourth year, I took a little, I took a, a little bit of time off. Um, I am really excited about this piece of the program. I, you know, just starting to read this literature has got me really energized. I am big on recycling, it's already been used, but um, I've been composting for a really, really long time, and I just, I love it. I, mean, I can stand in my compost pile and just look at it and smell it and feel it, and it's just like, oh, it's so awesome. <clears throat> so which, which one, the thing that's great about it is that my husband and my kids never 
thought about composting and now it's just automatic thing that they do every day. It's one of the biggest pieces of the municipal waste stream. And Prince George's County is doing some pilot programs and trying to make it, you know, more universal. And I can tell you that no way do you really see the difference than when you have to take your own trash to the dump. Where I live, you have to take your recyclables and your trash and nobody comes to your house, you have to take it. And we just started composting, and you know, I've lived in this house for a year now. And I end up not having to go to the dump every week. I go like every other week with one bag because so much is, is food waste. So good point, good to see we got a compost uh, fanatic. <laughs> In, in our midst, I love it. All right, Carolyn, go ahead. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Carolyn Vincent. Um, I came on the path of the landscape design program. And uh, like Lisa, I've been at it for several years. I uh, started that in about 2012. Um, I'm a master gardener in the Arlington Alexandria unit, which is something I'm very proud of because Cooperative Extension actually promotes a number of sustainable practices through education in the community. Um, I retired at the end of 2016, so Yay. I <laughs> and um, before two weeks ago, I was a vice president at RMC Research Corporation, which is a typical Washington consulting contracting type firm. We uh, did contracts from the U.S. Department of Education and State Departments of Education to support the implementation of federal education policy to improve outcomes for historically low performing populations. Um, so I've got four semesters that in addition to studying, I intend to spend playing around and exploring different avenues of working in this field. So it's a very exciting time for me. Great. Hi everybody, I'm Barbara Ryan, and um, so, let's see, my uh, background actually um, is as an economist, I have several graduate degrees and a doctorate, and made my way through, I work full time in the federal government, I'm in senior management at a federal regulatory banking agency, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, immersed in the transition right now, and uh, <laughs> So, and, and probably likely to transition to a new career sometime in, who knows, it might be a month, it might be a <laughs> <laughs> Kind of depends on how things go. Um, so I came into the program through the landscape design. Um, I'm also on sort of the slow track, but I have uh, two classes left and hope to get the certificate in August. Um, and. Uh, I'm very excited about this piece of it. Um, I'm finding reading, there's a lot of economics in this, so it's really, it's so cool to combine the landscape design and economics with the sustainable piece. Um, I also um, thinking about what I'm gonna do when I transition, and um, I'm beginning um, a, uh, I'm beginning to volunteer at the Botanical Garden. In oh, fact, nice. I just got my architect, uh, my uh, second PIV card yesterday <laughs> for um, entry into the Botanical Garden. And they have a sustainable program, so I'm excited about it. hopefully getting involved in something there mm -hmm. while I think about this transition. And I'm also a master naturalist in Fairfax County. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice, excellent. Another oh, cross-section. Yeah, oh, and sustainable, sustainable practice. Um, I was gonna mention the composting, but, uh, uh, well, um, so we live in a very, <clears throat> I live in McLean, a very heavily wooded lot, and um, we, uh, we shred our leaves in the fall, and we end up with like, you know, uh, dozens and dozens of bags of shredded leaf mulch, and, and, and I use that. I use it in my compost bin, I use it in my garden, I use it everywhere, so mm -hmm. anyway, it's pretty cool. My, Excellent. My practice. Oh. Um, I, I have some things in my bag, but what I couldn't fit in my bag my permeable driveway, which is my driveway. <laughs> that gives my brother-in-law an endless amount of jokes and teasing. Well, so I'm sure we'll hear more about that as we move forward. 
So great, we have someone with economy background. One of the three pillars of sustainability is economics. So welcome. Hi, my name is Catherine Lee, and I'm from China. Uh, I graduated with, uh, from University of Miami with uh, media management and public relations background. So it's kind of far from the uh, sustainable urban planning, but like I'm personally very uh, interested in this field. So when I graduate, I choose to jump into the field. Um, I also learned a lot of knowledge about economics in my uh, college life because I take a lot of courses in this area. So I also have a little background about economics. Um, I, I joined the GW last January. So I graduated uh, in the December 2016 and I joined here in the January 2016. Uh, I decided to also take, uh, so I joined the sustainable uh, urban planning program for master's degree and I also select to gain a certificate in the sustainable landscape area. Uh, so that's my track. Actually, I'm not a very sustainable person, especially <laughs> in the past, because my major, like, we need to print out a lot of stuff mm -hmm. in, in the final period, and our, like, instructor has a very strict requirement for the print, like, the, the quality for the print version and stuff, so I just waste too much paper, so mm -hmm. I feel very ashamed, especially when I read the book, like, the cradle to cradle. He's taught something about like, uh, like, like the trees or something. I, I thought I wasted too much, but I, I started to, to do something like sustainable since I joined this program. I think I need to do something like at least I learned this new thing. So I have a dog. So if I got some old clothes, I will change it to the dog, like make a dog pillow or dog blanket wow. with the old clothes, especially with my boyfriend's clothes, since my boyfriend's clothes is larger, so I can change <laughs> that to a dog clothes for my dog. So my dog is a lab right where it's kind of huge. So <laughs> oh, nice. That's kind of sustainable, I don't know. That's, but, that's very respectful. But I already read too much. <laughs> yeah, changing it into something else. Yeah, yeah we're going to talk about that in our cradle to cradle discussion on how we can change that, the mindset from, oh, I've used it, it's trash, to, oh, I've used it, and it's already been designed for its next use, whatever that is. Remember, so if you've read the syllabus, you know that I'm looking for ideas in that area. It's challenging, but I think you're onto something. So, sounds good. All right, welcome, Adam. Hi, I'm uh, Adam Kerr, I'm a landscape contractor of a small landscape company in a rural Rappahannock County near the Shenandoah National Park. Um, I'm in the Sustainable Landscapes program. This is my first class. Um, sustainable practice, I guess, with work. A lot of our properties have resources. Um, when we do projects, stone projects, timber projects, we'll collect all the materials, usually on site if they're there. So that would be a that's great. All right, cool. Thank you. Welcome. Hi, everybody. My name is Xin Zichuan. It's uh, hard to pronounce. I know that. Uh, I'm so excited to meet you all today for, for the first time. I, I'm from Beijing, China. I was a uh, urban designer for three and a half years at the IBM Group in Beijing office. And I believe I saw a lot of problems that happened during process in our project so that uh, I think that's it's a major reason that I start to think about the uh, do sustainable design uh, kind of work, make, make the project greener and I find it's uh, uh, the hardest part for us was uh, uh, how, how to convince our government client to, to uh, adopt the options with greener plans and they how to So I so I chose this program. Uh, so uh, I think I, I could learn more more practical things and uh, more professional language to persuade them and uh, uh, design sustainable practice. For me, I think.
So bikes instead of cars, and you have a media expert over here who can help you to message to the people that you need to convince. You know that's that's great. Well, I I just I really love everybody's explanation. We need to get Katie introduced. I'm not sure the best way to do this. Do I just turn you around so you can kind of see her face? I don't know. Oh, hi. Go ahead. Yeah. Hold on, just a sec. Hold on, just a second, Katie. Can everybody hear? Can you hear her? She's a little hard. Yeah. Is uh, talk louder, Katie. Talk louder, Katie. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Can I remind you? Hey, this is Michelle Can. You came to my office to introduce yourself about a month ago with Dan Murphy. Yes, I remember. Nice to see you. <laughs> so, so we have some connections already. That's great. Um, Just double tap it again. Double tap her again. Yep. That okay. puts that puts everybody back up. <laughs> okay. We're trying to figure out all this technology stuff. There you go, is that good, Katie? Back to where I was, you can see the screens? Yes, that's great. Okay. All right, well, I am so excited just because look at all the cross-pollination that can happen here between economics and architecture and messaging. This is a, what, a, what a great and exciting uh, garden we're going to get to uh, make together because Diversity is the most important thing, right? So, great. And as a former contractor myself, I have to tip my hat at Adam because the people that actually put these things in the ground, if you do, in sustainable practice, if you don't have good contractors, you don't have a sustainable plan because the contractors are the folks that make it happen for you. So, um, I just want to throw it, I mean, CJ and I have seen this day in, day out for years and years, and Katie as well in terms of her. Uh, knowledge base is, is tremendous. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot of resources here in this room that you, where you can share. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, that's, and I encourage you to do as much of that as you can, right? Talk to your classmates and all that. Okay, one little icebreaker. Uh, Maybe just pause for a minute. I, um, because we're filming uh, today and tomorrow, we, we need to do this in chunks rather than have, one whole thing you know okay so um, if you wouldn't mind we will pause you know when we're changing topics just for a minute so that 